Hey everybody, welcome to Made by McLean Live. I'm McLean, and uh, let's go ahead and make something today. Um, welcome, this is the, uh, the first month of streams. I've, I've done a month of streams so far, I should say, and um, it's been really great. Uh, there have been a, you know, a few hiccups so far, but as you can see today, I'm starting at 4 p.m. like I said I would, so kind of building that consistency a little bit. Um, uh, I've already done 15 streams, which is crazy. Uh, the last one with Birdman was a little shorter, it was only 10 minutes long, and I could have gone a little longer with that and talked a little more in depth about that suit and stuff. But uh, it was just a little week long pro uh, project. It's done, it's over with, and now we can get back to working on the Marvel Spider-Man suit, because I know that's what you guys are all crazy about and what you want to see. So we're going to pick up where I left off with the mask work, with that fabric mask that I was working on in Photoshop. So this one is kind of a Photoshop continued stream. Um, I've got a little bit of a head cold. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, I think it was from uh, a little bit of an overload of work for trying to make the Wonder WonderCon convention this, this weekend, and I still didn't even make it. I planned on going Sunday because I knew it would take me so long to finish the suit, but I still didn't even make it. But it was still pretty crazy to get that suit done in, just, in, in one week. I, I started working on it last Sunday night, and then uh, or the, the Sunday before last, and then had it last Sunday. So um, yeah, that was an awesome project, just three streams, um, more content, some kind of random little bits of information that you probably wouldn't get. I, you know, I don't carve foam very much for Spider-Man stuff. Um, but, you know, it, now that that week is over and we can get back into Spider-Man stuff because I know that's what you guys are crazy about. Um, so, without further ado, I've gotten gone ahead and um, gotten some more reference images because in the time since I've, I've worked on this last there have been a lot of you know posters and, and um, other images like that that have been released um, so there's a lot of information that's been released um, uh, picking up where we left off um, basically uh, I did a, a test mask of the MCU mask uh, that's the one thing I forgot today. I don't know where that mask is. Oh, it's sitting over on the table, so I can grab it in a second here. Um, but uh, we did this test mask, and uh, this this actually is not a great pattern right now. It looks very similar to the um, the the last Amazing Spider-Man movie patterns, because uh, that's just what I know. And it also I know that the, this newer movie kind of has some similarities there. But there are certain things that I know for sure that I need to change. One of those things, I know that the chin is too wide here. So one of the things I'll have to do is I'll have to make the chin narrow. But what that also means is I'll have to move all of the other mask components a little bit. I'll have to move all of that at once. I can't just shrink the chin because then I'll make these cells next to it a little too large. Um, I know that this web gap is too large. It doesn't need to be nearly that thick. It, it's basically just the thickness of that white area in between. Um, uh, also, for the mask design for my suit, um, you know, when you're making a custom pattern, one of the things that's difficult to decide on is how you're going to do the mask going into the rest of the suit. Because a lot of, you'll see on most costumes that you, you either just have a mask that's kind of bunched up and hopefully is covering the neck piece because the neck piece has a tendency to slide down and you can kind of see under that sometimes. Um, or you can have the mask just sewn directly onto the suit if the pattern's designed well enough, like the Sam Raimi pattern from the original movies. Um, if you do uh, have that, like this, I mean, in this production art, this is, you know, this is not a real suit. This is like a comic book drawing. Uh, none of this is, is real, so they were able to just conceptualize it as much as they wanted. So this is a good thing to actually base it on. You can base it on how they did it for the movie, but you can tell when you look at some of the shots, um, reference shots for the movie. This one's actually pretty good, good to demonstrate what I'm talking about. When you, Sorry, it's a little pixely because I'm zooming in so much. But you can tell that they have a seam that just goes up here and just cuts cuts in the middle and kind of ignores the webs, and that's kind of unprecedented in, in Spider-Man stuff. It offers a lot of information, because uh, I think that basically means that this is a corner right here, so this is all basically flat in one piece, or it could have a seam somewhere. Uh, and then you got a corner piece right up here, then it goes up and probably joins joins up with the uh, like top seam up here. Um, but I don't know, I don't really want to do it that way, because you can see it 
right here, just cutting through. Um, if accuracy is what you're going for, accuracy to the movie, um, my, my feeling is that they did that because they knew that most of the suit footage is going to be, you know, done over with CG. Uh, that's what they did for Civil War. They just did the whole suit with CG. So um, I think that's what they they had in mind because there are a lot of areas on the suit for the actual movie suit where the seams just kind of cut through the webbing and um you know there there are good ways to hide it and not do that so um what i think i'm going to do with my suit because this is just my favorite by far is on the mask part just totally cut off the neck i would basically get rid of everything that's down below this section right here and what that does is it makes the mask go right up to here um, this one doesn't, doesn't have that on it, um, but I can, I'll put it on and, and kind of demonstrate what I mean. So, you know, some masks, uh, go down and, uh, you know, this one included goes down, you know, pretty far. It goes down on the neck. Um, but what I'm going to do with my mask is I'm going to have it so that it ends basically up here, right underneath the chin. Um, the mask will be just this long. Um, and you might think, that's insane. Um, you're definitely gonna see the neck, you know, the neck come down or um, the neck's gonna fall and you're not gonna be able to um, uh, uh, hide that gap well. But what you do is on the rest of the suit, um, it makes it, when the mask is this big, it makes it so easy to just take it on and put it off. You can do photo shoots where the mask is just barely coming up because you have so little, you know, neck fabric in there. Um, but uh, then with the suit, in order to keep it from sliding down, you do a hood. You design the suit so that it has a hood that goes all the way over the, the head and over the neck. Um, you know what? I'm going to grab Harvey, Harvey Birdman here. This is a great demonstration of a hood. Um, oh wow, it's keying out the reflection of the green. I've got to keep that from happening. Um, but this is the, the Harvey Birdman helmet that I made over the course of last week's streams. I did a lot of uh, the sanding and printing in um, last Thursday's stream. So you can go back and check out that, the process of making that here. But um, what we're looking at here is this hood because um, Harvey Birdman has got a hood very similar, not the ears. The ears are kind of a, a funny detail, um, but what, uh, what the hood lets you do, you don't have to do a back neck zipper because you can design it so that there's no neck seam. You can just design your suit so that the, the chest pieces and the arm pieces can just go up and straight up to the neck the way the Sam Raimi pattern was designed. Um, and so, you end up with a hood piece similar to this. This one looks a little funny. Looks like I'm about to go like diving with Jacques Cousteau. Um, uh, but you, you start out with a, a hood piece like this and this is connected to the rest of your suit. So this is tugging and you'd, you'd have a little more fabric here. I had cut this down really close to the jaw. Um, but you'd have this um, uh, pulling the neck piece because then you're able to just put the face shell and the shortened mask piece on top of that hood. So this is actually a really good demonstration here of this, of this technique. I learned this um, watching the Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark, that, that Broadway musical that they made a couple of years ago. They did a behind the scenes interview with one of the Spider-Man acrobats and this is the way they did their suits because it's so accessible and it looks really clean um so as you can see you know it looks insanely clean um and if you design if you design it so that you have a web line on the bottom of your mask uh going all the way around the bottom so you'd have you know a black web line and then on the top of your hood you'd have no web line so basically that web line would just be the bottom of the mask and you know I've done that on a couple suits and every time it really astounds people how you have a removable mask but also you know be able to um, get in and out and then you can also take the hood off like this so now it's just like um, a spider-man suit with the neck so as you can see now I'm just got a hood so 
that's definitely how I'm going to design this one that I'm doing here. Um, uh, this Amazing Spider-Man, or no, it's not Amazing Spider-Man, it's uh, Marvel. It's the Mar MCU Spider-Man. Apparently a lot of people are up in arms about whether it's too much Tony Stark and everything, but I think that's inevitable when you when you smash movie universes together. It's not quite the same as when you smash comic book universes together because you can have like Peter Parker and Tony Stark meet in the comic books and then they go back to their own separate worlds and totally forget about it. But in movies, movies are such a chronicle of a person's point in their life, so it's kind of weird when you know, Captain America and Thor work together and then in the next movie, Thor is gone and it's like, well, why didn't he call Thor? Thor could have helped him so much. So it's, you know, it's a it's a weird thing to have that um, in movies. It's harder in movies, which is my opinion on that. Um, anyway, so back to what we're doing here with the mask. Um, I've left my um, temporary mask pattern here up for you so you can get a nice long look at that. Um, I'm thinking I might actually like sell a, a very simplified version of this this file, although you'll, you'll basically get it all in the stream because I'm just gonna do it all live. Um, but uh, a, a simplified version of this file so you can just do red fabric because I've seen some people out there like um, Brian, uh, he, he, it looks like he just used red fabric and puff paint and stuff and didn't even do dye sublimation. So I mean, that, that saves you a lot of time and it makes it easier to get good colors and I mean the suit doesn't really need muscle shading so um, anyway that's a lot of um, a lot of off-topic stuff uh, that doesn't have much to do with this mask but uh, we'll, we'll get back on topic here all right so I need to grab an ASM one face shell from somewhere. Usually I have one laying around somewhere. I'm gonna go grab one of those really quick. Sorry. <clears throat> All right. So <clears throat> I'm using the ASM1 face shell for designing um, oh yeah, I didn't even mention. So no, Will's, Will's not here. Uh, I saw your comment. Flubdub just asked if Will is here. Um, Will, it's really exciting. He's, I've mentioned a few times on the stream that he's been doing sound editing for a movie called Boogeyman Pop that's been picked, picked up by Bloomhouse. So they, they actually got some money from Bloomhouse, which is a production company that did, um, Get Out with Jordan Peele, I believe, um, recently. And so... Really exciting. He's actually today they're they're doing a premiere of the movie, um, so he's been working like nonstop the last few days to get, you know, exported in the right format. And it's a full feature length film, and I watched it last night, and it's actually really cool. So um, you might see that on like Netflix or you know wherever you know you actually see those things. Probably around October when you know it's a horror like a sort of horror genre movie. So it's interesting. Um, but yeah, so Will is not here. It's just me. Um, Anyway, so back to the ASM-1 shell. It's hard to kind of show the details of just the shell, but um, this is just the ASM-1 shell. And I'm gonna use this one as my base for MCU because it has, if you look at MCU Spider-Man, he's got sort of um, more of a protruding cheekbone that kind of like turns into like a curve for the rest of his face. And then also his lenses are kind of smaller. So if you were to use ASM-2, which I, I've actually seen, you know, you can tell with a couple people that they are using ASM-2 shells because you can see a, a sort of outline around their lens. You can see where you actually have the ASM-2 outline because it's a lot larger than those lenses. So that's why I'm using ASM-1. It's basically same, same sizes. It's about the same placement. Um, so it, it's really helpful. But what I'm gonna do for the final shell is basically what I did for Harvey Birdman here. If you look, they're basically the same thing. I mean, they're, they're, they're just the same like face shell toward a sort of shape. And um, this thing is really, you know, good quality. Um, it's, it's hard. Um, I'm not positive about the durability. I haven't dropped it or anything, but it would be perfect for having the eye holes already um, printed into the shell, which is going to be important for doing the moving lens mechanics. It'll, it could have all of the moving lens mechanic 
parts up inside of the shell. So um, I might design the moving shell in Blender, the moving lens shell, the next version in Blender, because um, I need to work on that. I've got about 10 things that I really need to work on. A lot of people waiting for their stuff. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I still want to do these streams. These streams kind of help me focus and keep everything organized. Um, but I'm really excited to actually do the, uh, the moving lens face shell. Looks like Wolverine. <laughs> little side note, um, to do the moving lens face shell and uh, um, just use Blender and then you could print all the components and I could release the STL files. I've also got a really cool idea for, with the face shell, the STL file, um, doing a moving jaw. Um, I've done a couple of experiments with these doing a moving jaw, but it's just way too much effort cutting like the, the lines and stuff in the shell that you need to get it to be able to move but still keep its shape. But with 3D printing, I think that's going to be a piece of cake. And so it's going to have a really cool structure to the face. I'm not going to go too in-depth with it because every time I mention something, a new feature I'm going to include, about three of my competitors uh, make social media posts about how they're going to start doing it too. So um, uh, I'm going to wait until I've actually got that a little more designed to show it to you guys. But I think it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a moving jaw, and then we're also going to have the moving lenses. So uh, 3D printing is just incredible. That's going to really move everything forward uh, a high amount. Um, okay, back to where I was at. We've got the ASM-1 shell. Oh, there's Laurent. Hi, Laurent. Maybe this is your ASM-1 shell. <laughs> I think it probably is, actually. Um, Laurent is waiting on a ASM-1 face shell. I'm working on the face shells um, earlier in the day, like I got some face shell work done earlier today. Um, uh, so to those, to those of you waiting for things like face shells, thinking that I'm only working on the stream, I am getting, getting some progress done on those types of things. So, so awesome having you, you tune in for that. <laughs> um, okay. So what I've got here is the ASM one shell and then also the fabric mask. Actually, I'll put it on because I, I design on this mannequin head and I don't change the size much because I know that my head is a lot bigger than this mannequin head. I have a huge head. Uh, thank, thank goodness I'm tall, but it still is a gigantic head. So <laughs> that's, that's part of why I got into making masks, actually. I always had to make my own masks because they never fit my head. Um, so if I, if I wanted a mask, I had to make it because like Bubba Fett was the only mask and maybe a stormtrooper. Even some, some Don Post stormtrooper helmets really hurt my head. Um, so, who knows? All right, this doesn't have air holes. <laughs> it's gonna sound like I'm in a Tupperware container here. <laughs> we'll just look at it really quick because I probably can't stay in here for long. All right, so you can see um, it looks a little bit better when it's on my head. Yeah, Ugh, I can't stay in there too long. I didn't put air holes in there yet. Um, looks a little bit better when it's on my head because my head's a little bit bigger, my neck's a little bit bigger. Um, but there still is a lot of slack. Um, the seams are, are still really wrinkly. I'll put it back on the, the mannequin head because ultimately I do, I do aim to design it so that it looks good on the mannequin head because a lot of people have tiny little um, heads. So, um, uh, Twisted just commented that lucky people getting ASM-1 shells. Twisted, I'm definitely, um, when I release face shell STL files, I'm going to do um, ASM-1 as well. So, um, and also when, when I catch up with work too, I'll be able to kind of release kit, kit stuff like lenses and frames and stuff. And that'll be um, a, lot, a lot more manageable on my end. Um, um, Laurent... Um, from bottom to top, the face shell is, I know you're in France or somewhere. Um, well, um, you know, I'm probably not going to announce it on the stream. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to design certain things in front of you guys, but I'm not going to give everything away. So. You know, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what you need that information for, probably sizing, but um, if, if you're worried about it not fitting well, uh, you know, my head is, is 
huge, so um, they fit on my head, and you can uh, even trim them further if your head is even bigger than that, and uh, you know, uh, you'll have a little bit better luck. Um, also, so let's uh, let's get back to this. Um, uh, yeah, so um, I was mentioning that uh, it's got some bunching bunching up going on the seam, in the seams up here. If you look close, you can see that it's, it's wrinkling. Um, I've seen that from a few other people's suits too. It's difficult. It's difficult to manage this bunching, especially when you're doing kind of complex curves and um, putting them together and having to stretch them and stuff. So that's what happened here. And I also was just kind of rushing because with these test masks, I don't, I don't get too invested in the quality. I just want to see kind of how it looks and how everything goes together. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, as you can see that it's bunching up a little bit. And so what I'm going to do, and I also, um, when I, uh, one thing you can do, I know that if I pin it back, if I pull, pull back and, you know, kind of like if you're, you know, uh, you know, just pulling back and, and stretching it tight, you can see that that relieves, um, uh, a lot of that um, wrinkling and stuff. And so basically what that means is whatever I'm pinching back here, I'm pinching like about two inches of material on either side. That's like two inches right back here at the neck crease. Um, that might be too much, but that's about how much material needs to be removed in order for this to be tight like that while the, the mask is being worn. If you have any more than that, then it looks like that. Um, so that's, that's basically what's, what needs to be removed. It's not just all going to be removed from the back. It actually needs to be removed sort of um, equally throughout the whole distance of the thing. Um, and so I think that's like a solid inch and a half, like so like three inches total from both sides of material that needs to be taken off. Um, and so what I do, this is the first uh, file that I've done. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the one that I actually did for, for this mask. That's why I'm starting with it. I did a separate file for the stream. So if you had just picked up from where the last stream ended, um, it'll look a little different because I've done some work on it. Um, and really quick, since I decided that these webs are too thick, I'm going to just add a temporary uh, brush stroke for those webs. And I've, you can see here I've saved some brush sizes. Like six is just kind of my uh, outline size just for making outlines for different purposes, just you know, looking at things. And you can go smaller for finer detail things. Um, wrong color, just do black. Keep it simple, because um, what I'm going to do here, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to take all of these layers, because this is all of mask front, all of mask back together. Uh, I'm going to actually go ahead and do the same thing I did for the back here. I don't know where those, oh, it's just one web. Well. Uh, copy it and paste it and that'll make it a new path you want to rename it if it's ever named work path you want to double click on that and name it something else um, yeah, column and then Go ahead and got to have a layer for it to do, do that on. All right, so now I've got all of those layers. <clears throat> um, yeah, so got all those layers. And also, you know, I'm thinking about how this mask, you know, I. I really don't even need any of this information down below this area down here. Um, <laughs> um, I don't need any of this information in this area down below here. So what I'm going to do 
is make a new layer really quick. I'm not naming any of this stuff. You'll see why in a moment. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I think this is the seam line I'm going to stop the mask at. It's high on the back, but it doesn't really matter because, I mean, the hood does it. The hood goes up and, and simulates all of this. And so, um, and the, I mean, the, if it goes up like that, as long as it kind of, uh, collapses around the shape of your head, it's good. It kind of gives you the ability to have a larger mask opening and easier to just pull your mask off without damaging the material. Um, cause stretching a mask a lot can be one of the biggest, uh, destructive forces of puff paint. So, okay, so I've done that now. Now what I wanna do here is I wanna keep all this as like a reference. So I'm just gonna go ahead, well, first, I'm just gonna go ahead and save it because it's the mask pattern one. Um, and then I'm just going to merge visible. And now I can take my select tool, I hit M to get to that quickly. And, um, I'm going to select this now merged layer, just all of the mask, all of the old mask design. I'm going to copy and then Control Shift V. Oh yeah, there was one, there was something to make a new layer. Um, but yeah, and then uh, I think it was like Control Alt E or something. Uh, I need to watch my old stream. But then I'm going to go ahead and just go back, which is Control Alt Z a couple times. And so now it's sort of like nothing nothing just happened and none of that that happened because I, I stepped back a couple times but um, what I can do is control shift V again and I've got that layer um, that's just how I've always done it I there I, I remember someone saying that there was another another way to do that but um, um um yeah and so sorry I just got for some reason, I got a I got a comment up on my on my monitor that I didn't get on my stream here. Maybe my stream is no, it's fine. That's weird. Um, anyway, someone asked if I have um, a plan for the the black like the black armor details that that will help with mobility. And yeah, I do. I have a I have a pretty neat idea uh, on a technique that I've used in the past. Um, and it's it's super flexible it's super durable so you know that's going to be coming up in a stream probably a month from now um you know once i've got the the pattern to that point i'll probably have a dye sublimation suit because uh, that's probably what i'm going to start out with not textured or anything and then um uh yeah that's when i'll be doing those armor pieces and i'll 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 just be doing all that here. I'm, I'm really thinking I'm just going to do all construction of that suit here on the stream so that I have it here archived on YouTube uh, for all time, um, or at least until YouTube dies. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Now my now my comments are, are coming back. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when I'm reading a comment, it was a, a long comment. It was far away. So I, was, I had to kind of sit there and <laughs> and figure it, figure out why I was seeing it there and not here. Um, you mostly, most of my comments are down here. Um, okay. Back to this stuff. Okay. So I've got this layer on its own. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new grouping. And I'm going to call that mask pattern one. And I'm just going to throw all of this stuff into that file. So now that's just this remnant of this, you know, this very first mask pattern. And the, every, every pattern has that, just a very beginner file that you don't really know what you're going to need, where you're going to need fabric or not. And so you end up having a lot of uh, things that need to be changed. And so these patterns are really kind of just very temporary, only useful for <laughs> as long as you need it until you update the pattern. Um, I do need another uh, mask front. And mask back. All right. And I'm actually going to just go ahead I like to keep everything nice and neat because when you're 
You know, I'm only designing a mask right now, but once you start designing a suit, you can have so many layers of reference and uh, stuff like that. And um, I'd also probably be uh, smart to move over a little bit here. I have them. I have everything very close together, and that kind of uh, crowds things when you start to have your seam allowances added in. Um, all right, so I've got that new mask front and mask back, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna select that again. Uh, I'm actually going to cut it out and put it in the mask back as old mask back ref old mask front ref and now that gives me both of these to work with um, separately and um, what I'm actually going to do as well is I'm going to bump the opacity here because I need to edit things but I don't want that to uh, be too um, present. It gets hard to see what you're changing and stuff. So I like to get it pretty translucent here. All right. And now what this lets you do is, uh, oh yeah, I, I've been bad about this in streams, but I've, I'm usually good about it otherwise. Just save often, always save often. And uh, what I've done here is I've added a one at the end of the file. And the reason for that is now I add a two. And rather than just always saving over my previous work, occasionally I branch off into a new file. And so if, if something goes wrong or a path gets deleted or a layer gets deleted and you can't go back far enough to get it, you can have these backup files if you save a new backup file every now and then. If you're saving a really large file, you might not be able to save too many of these, um, but uh, it's good to have have these backup files. So that's what I'm going to do here. So now everything that I do and save in this file is a new project going forward. That other one stays the same as this one, if, in case I ever need to go back for that. Um, and so basically what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna kinda uh, charge straight ahead, do what I, I normally do, because I'm just trying to get the work done, essentially. Um, so what happens is I've got everything as a sketch here, and then I've got also these separated uh, layers on their own. But the, the sketch is kind of what's most important, because that really allows you to um, edit everything at once. Because a lot of what we're going to be doing right here is changing scale and size of things. So, um, yeah, I want, to, I want to be able to change everything at once. I like to keep everything on one path layer. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start by thinning this back piece a little bit. Not a lot. When I pinched it, I basically removed this back piece, um, that amount of fabric. Um, but I don't want to just take it all from the back here because that that's not uh, you know you gotta remove fabric where you have too much and obviously right now there's way too much fabric right here I can just you know with my experience with working on these kinds of masks I can tell that there's way too much fabric right here for uh, for what I'm doing um, and so yeah first I'm taking the back here and I'm just altering it slightly, just making it a little thinner. Probably move this a little bit so it's centered again. Yeah, I mean, that's that's basically, well, there's also the fact that I want to remove the bottom. So what I do is I'll select the outline here. So I have the, uh, the outline of this back mask piece activated here. And with the pen tool, I just hit P and that switched over to the pen tool. I'll add a point. You see how the, the icon changes around the pen icon? You add a point there when you're above the active outline. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and I'm doing it just above this web outline that I wanna cut off above. Um, oops, I, I selected too close and it selected the, uh, the other line. So I'm going to select that again and uh, yeah, do that again. Um, 
And I, I guarantee you there's probably a better way to do this, but once again, I I said that a lot in the last Photoshop stream, so I'll say it again. I'm very like self-taught with all of this, uh, but I am able to get to a finished result. So I, I'm just basically sharing with you the, the way I do that, if, even if it kind of might seem a little crazy if you know Photoshop better than I do here. Um, yeah, so I'm now I'm going to select both of these points, kind of in blender mode, and I'm gonna cut them out. Oh wait, there's one in the middle here as well. Um, I've got all the points on that outline selected below those two I've selected, and I'm gonna cut them out, and that will remove them completely. And so I'm left with this, this end here, right next to um, Derek, or um, Laurent asked a while ago, or a little while ago, I'm not sure how long ago, if, if these principles can be applied to any Spider-Man suit. And uh, yeah, absolutely. You can do this. You, I've done the stream so far all the way from the beginning of starting with a uh, mannequin head. And I've mentioned a couple times that if you want to do a different suit, um, you basically just follow the same steps, but just go a slightly different direction in some of the, the places that uh, I've, I've shown you so far. Um, Okay, and so that's not super nice or super clean. It's got these two points now, and I'm, I'm sure I could just merge the points or something. Um, merge. Uh, merge. No. Uh, what? Well, I'm sure there's some way. But anyway, I typically, I've just always kept it um, that there's just one... There are two, two little points in the corner there. And, you know, I always just kind of manage both of them, which I, I, I've always known is not the best way to do it. But it's kind of difficult to learn some of the more intricate uh, things about paths. It's easy to find tutorials on, like, the basic things about paths, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's difficult to do to find good, good tutorials. Okay. Um, anyway, so uh, I've done that. I basically, you know, finished altering what I want to alter about that back mask pattern. I mean, geez, that's so ridiculously small. I mean, I could probably do something like merge, merge the two back pieces together. So it's just a square, just a panel, kind of like what this is, just a panel. But um, I don't know, I'll just keep it like that for now and I'll test it out. Uh, and so I've got that. And now uh, we'll begin a lot of the brunt work of updating this pattern. So all of this is just what I have sitting in front of me. So um, I mentioned in an earlier stream that I, I basically printed this outline that I've got in Photoshop here, printed it onto paper, traced it onto fabric, spandex like this, and that's how I did this test mask. It's just a simple um, red spandex that you get at most fabric stores. And that's a good way to, um, you know, do your tests because you need to test out your pattern before, you know, you move on too far or else you have little errors that you will never catch. Um, okay, so I know that the chin is too wide. I'm going to look at some reference here. Um, I know that my chin is too wide. It looks like his gets a, at least a little closer, like around a centimeter closer in on either side. And I also want to move either move these seams, because I have these seams coming up uh, a little ways to kind of account for the shape of the chin, but I think I might move them down and then have the, the middle uh, um, start a webbing segment shorter. So basically, if we go back to Photoshop here, what that means is I've got this V right here and that's kind of causing me problems. So I think I'm just gonna bring the line all the way down to where these points here meet up and that's where the, the gap will start, the separation between the two. So that's how I'm gonna start it, uh, try it out with my next um, iteration of this design. So uh, I've got the mask file here the middle, the middle portion was all is all pretty good. If anything, um, maybe I have too much material, like right here. I might have maybe bowed out a little bit too much. So if I bring that in a little bit, like that, just just a little bit. I mean, it's not even 
um, a ton. And then it looks like uh, this this little wave waver out part doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. So I'll just straighten that a little bit because it kind of gets thicker right here and kind of makes a little pointed corner piece. Um, uh, yeah, and so a lot of the issues that are left are basically that it's there's just way too much surface area in the whole side of the face, this whole area right here, just way too much surface area. So what I'm gonna do to kind of get ready for editing all of that is I wanna start at the chin and kind of work my way over because I need everything to kind of still be based off of this middle line of symmetry. I couldn't just directly shrink everything because then it makes the chin even further apart, um, if you can visualize that. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and start with the chin, my, my edits to the chin here. And I just go back and forth between my test model and the reference photos I have. Um, that one's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I like the shape up to the nose. The nose could even be a little lower, although that might just be where the mask is on the, the mat, the shell right now. Um, it's just a little too wide down there at the chin. Um, you know, he really does. It's a huge, huge gap here on the chin. Uh, it's And it doesn't have any middle web either. It's just kind of like, a, it's kind of like, this whole costume is a lot like a cartoon Spider-Man, the cartoon Spider-Man from uh, several decades ago. So, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to my file, and I don't even need to shrink it too much. But I'm going to select both of those points. I'm just going to bring them over. I'm going to hold, oh, that's control. I'm going to hold shift, and that's going to keep them from going up or down. I'm just going to bring them over, and I'm going to angle this one down a little bit. Although they're going to just meet up at this point here. So it's basically going to be a matter of um, uh, this, this point, sorry, there we go. Um, this point moving down to here, essentially. And you know, that's not easy, but um, that's, that's what it needs to be right now. Uh, but I'm not going to do it like that. Because that's that was what I was talking about. I don't want to edit it individually like that. What I'm going to do is go ahead and try to select all of this side of the mask as much as I can here. Even up here. No, I, I don't want that middle one because that if I were to move this middle point, it would affect kind of the shape of of the forehead piece, and I don't want that. I want the shape to change once it leaves this point here. So I'm continue to select things, and I just have shift held. That's why I'm just continually selecting stuff. And I don't want to move any of these points. I don't want the, the middle shape to change at all. So I'm just trying to get everything on the side of that. This is gonna be like, where's Waldo? Is there any, any points I missed? Yes. Um, yep. Okay. So now what I can do is I can go control transform. That's control T. And uh, I've mentioned this before. You can move this, uh, this origin point here around just by clicking on it. And that's your pivot point. That's where everything in this transform box is going to pivot around. So basically, you know, this point right here, I wanted all the point kind of pivot around this this dart I've I've made in here. So what's gonna happen is ah, I missed a point. Whoops, I fail. Fail where's Waldo? Yep, that one. Try again. There we go. So you see I've just brought this point down here. Uh, over and basically gotten it to the point where it meets up with the chin here. And you can see that there's a little bit of a, a difference 
which was a mistake I made. I actually struggled with it a little bit sewing it, but I can, I can fix that here. So essentially I just need it to meet up here and it just, it just, um, it has to, uh, make up that shape in there. It just has to, uh, do that, um, via stretching. So now I can, well, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I did before with the back piece and add a new point there and then go back to select and uh, cut that point out. And so now what that lets me do is it allows me to start from this and I'm going to hold alt because that's going to start a new, um, like a transform line. Uh, you see how they're, they're separate. If I wasn't holding alt, it would just use that line that exists below. Um, and it needs to be more of a dart. So, I mean, this is always a, a very much like a puzzle, puzzle piece. Um, uh, you know, uh, putting a puzzle together, I, I should say. Um, oh, that line is way too low. Yeah, I think this line might be a little too low on the map. No, that's right. That's, that's right. Never mind. Sorry. Um, okay. So yeah, so I've moved that down much further. So now that's not going to be so much of a thing it's going to have to, to struggle with. Um, but I do need to make the dart. Whenever you have a dart, it has to come together at a narrow angle because that, when it comes up, that's how it, you get a, a smooth shape. If the dart comes together at a wide angle, you know, if it's, if it's even close to being, you know, like, uh, I mean, not obtuse. If it was an obtuse angle, it would look terrible. But, you know, if it's, if it's just anything more than just a couple degrees of an angle in there, your dart is going to look really pointy. And a lot of people do that on their chest. Uh, the chess pieces of their Spider-Man. They do that Sam Raimi dart that comes together at like a football angle of like, you know, 15 degrees or something. And that makes a point in the suit. Um, so you just make your, sh your shapes, you know, close together. And that's what gets that curve in there. Um, I can tell right now that this is not, uh, you know, this is not what the final shape is going to look like, to say the least. It's a little weird right now. Oh, it needs to be moved up. I'm basing it off that bottom line, but this bottom line actually needs to be moved up as well. Holding shift, and that just lets me move it directly up. Okay, so I've added a little bit of um, thickness to the bottom of the mask down here. Doesn't matter because, I mean, it, it has just a, a pretty stark line, just a curve underneath here, and it only makes it down to here. So I can basically cut everything down below that. Um, that already has a point there, which is nice. Uh, this one needs one up here. And now I just select everything below that. Oops. And cut it. Uh, and so now I'm going to do the same thing with the webs. Oh, this one already has one. All right. So now I can select all that stuff underneath there. Now I'm going to cut them again. And so now I've, what I'm left with here, uh, you can kind of go back to your layers and just kind of bring it in and out and see how things have changed. And that looks a lot better already. That's already making a lot of sense. And this is stark. I mean, this is a, a huge change in shape here that it makes. It kind of opens like a book, goes in two different directions, but that doesn't matter because it's still, you know, when it all comes together, it's going to make a, uh, a human, a very 
you know, an analog of a human head shape, and then you'll stretch it out, and because of the stretchiness of the spandex, it will take the shape of your head, and it won't have any wrinkles or seams or anything. Um, okay, so, oh, I need to do the, the same thing down here. Ugh, sometimes that happens to me. You zoom in, and it, I guess it considers that leaving the... Oh, whoops. Uh, leaving the window or something. So you have to click it again. There might be some way to <laughs> do something against that. I'll say that a million times, probably. There's probably something I could do about that, but I don't know. <laughs> kind of, I'm kind of stubborn that way. Not, not meaningfully. I just, or I don't mean to to be that way, but it kind of, kind of happens. Um, okay, so I'm gonna move this this web. Uh, the seam it lined up with moved tremendously, so this is where I, I get to try and, and meet that shape I had before. Um, actually, you know what I probably should do is uh, do that again. Um, There we go. Okay. So what I should probably do is that. I mean that that's pretty much the shape, like right around the, the chin. It could probably be brought in a little bit, and that's kind of a component of the chin having been too thick. But you want a nice smooth curve. I mean, that's the name of the game when you're doing Spider-Man suits. You just want nice, long, smooth curves. You don't want to line Anywhere on the suit, unless, I mean, sometimes you have kind of wonky lines. I can see some wonky lines here. Like this one comes down and then immediately turns down just because there's so much space on the side of the head that immediately has to bottleneck down into the amount of space on the neck that inevitably there's kind of some weird little solutions that they have to make on the side of the mask in order to, like you can see here, they've got this, there's always this flower shape. Well, that's, that's always what I've kind of looked at it like is um, it's kind of like a flower you know you've got petals that all come together into this webbing thing and um, it helps to think of it like that because um, right now I mean this part I think it's uh, nature of the design it could probably be moved up moved a little bit but uh, uh, I always like to have the cells be equal sizes to the cells around them like sort of sort of equal size at least you want everything to look nice and symmetrical because that's the key to a good pattern um, all right, and I'm gonna go back to my reference here. So you can see that curves, <laughs> it's a web that curves. Um, it, uh, what you wanna kind of pay attention to, what can help you out here is what's the shape of these um, cells? These are very uh, even shapes compared to something like this one up here. This is not an even shape. It has a thinner corner up here than it does down here. But these are very even shaped. It maybe gets a little bit bigger down here, but it's um, you know it's a consistent size. And so when I go back to mine and I look at that, I think that's what that. Oh wait, no. You know what? I might be wrong right now. Um, let me cal get oriented here. It's one, two, three, four. Wait. Yeah, three, and one, two, three. Yeah, I'm, that's that's right. I'm just that's how that's how off. You know, you can see this is this is the square that I was just talking about. This one right here, and you can see that it's this squished, you know, kind of mess right now. But that's how you decide how you fix things like that. Um, I think one problem might be that I might have mushed the things together a little too much. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is sort of repeat the same process that I did before of just getting everything that's below you know I didn't select any of the stuff up here I didn't select that um, don't yeah I guess I don't want to select that um, yeah I want to get everything else and I want to transform it again and once again pivot from up here in the eye area And that kind of, you know, it gives me that space inside of there a little bit. Um, 
gives me that space I kind of need right now. And I think I'm actually going to delete that anchor point. Oh, shoot. I didn't put any length to this point down here. You typically, you know, this point doesn't have any, uh, when I said length, what I meant is this, I, I need to learn the technical name of this, but this, this is sort of um, transformation bar that comes off the point. Um, uh, you want that, oops, that's not right. Uh, get your pen tool, hold, alt, and nope, that didn't work. Um, Oh, uh, what I can do here if I, oh no, that didn't work. Oh, well, I'll just delete it for now. But uh, there's certain things you can do to, to add that, that manipulator bar, but you always just wanna add it like this. Like whenever you put a point down, you wanna add it because when you don't have it, it's annoying like you just saw. Because what I wanna do is, I think I just wanna delete that point there. It kinda disturbs my ability to make just a nice smooth line down between these two things. And then I think maybe it's like that, like that, even more up and down. Because um, when you have a dart like this, whatever like webbing or anything like that that you've got coming out, it's going to go like right between the two. It's going to want to meet the two because when, they're, when they come together, the two points come together, if you think about those things when they're sewn together, you want that, that webbing line to come right out, like grow right out between that angle and split it right down the middle. Any, any bit to either side, and you'll be able to tell once that seam is sewn together. Um, nice to see you, Laurent. Hi, Josh. Bread. Thank you for the bread. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go back to my um, reference photo here. Uh, so, yeah, it's thin, and then it curves down. It goes, it's like straight for a little while, then curves, and just kind of meets that uh, shape down there. And so I can tell right away that I've just got too, too much of a, like, bugged out curve to it. And then also, it needs to just come straight down, essentially. I'm going to go ahead and collapse a lot of this shape here. I actually might want to just go ahead and, since, since we keep doing this over and over, I'm doing this selection box with the, um, the vertices, the individual vertices selection tool. Um, what's that called? That's the... Direct Selection Tool. The Direct Selection Tool here. It's on the sidebar over there. Um, and you hold Shift, and you can kind of just select your vertices over and over. I missed a couple. And now what I want to do is I'm going to do Transform again. This time, I'm just going to actually shrink the whole thing. Um, undo that really fast. I need... I need some reference of the old pattern. You can see I've, now that I've got that old pattern back there again, and I can make it even more translucent because I, I don't need much information of that. Um, but, uh, you know, I've got that old pattern there so that I can see, you know, since I know I want to take like an inch and a half of material off just to kind of account for that shape difference. And I've kind of already started to do that. I've taken a lot from the chin and the chin was the chin was adding a lot of fabric to the sides, so I don't need to take quite so much off the side shape. But I can tell right now, it's got a very elongated shape that you want it to get from um, from stretching. You know, it needs to it needs to get that elongated shape from stretching, not just have that to begin with. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring that in quite a bit there. Yeah. And that, that right away, that kind of helps to make a lot of the stuff make a little more sense. It's a little like the shape of it all kind of looks a little cleaner and stuff. Um, yeah, uh, might need to bring it in a little bit, but that, that will also just come from editing that outer line just in general. 
And also, I'll tell you right now, I don't know if this will work. It's guesswork. It's totally guesswork. And um, the way that I find out if this works is once I have something that looks pretty good and looks like it could work, I do this same process again. I do the, the printing and the uh, tracing and outlining and sewing, and it's pretty labor intensive, but otherwise, how else are you, you, you you're just banking on getting lucky and, and figuring out the design, um, or you're just content with the sort of little solutions you have to make little trade-offs you have to make in order to make the design. Because a lot of people just design from the Sam Raimi suit design, and they just fit, they just cram everything into the Sam Raimi design. Because it's, it's kind of like um, an easy, easier way to do it, because you know exactly where everything goes on the pattern, and you know that the file fits pretty well. Because it can get pretty complex with spandex when you're making a brand new pattern, like um, to make sure that it stretches and it doesn't get wrinkly and it doesn't um, bunch up or anything like that. It can get pretty complex. I'm gonna go ahead and look back at some reference here because I'm working on down here right now. And I've never, I, I've never actually seen a ton of reference from down here. It's kind of hard to find photos that get into that, and it gets pretty thin down here. This this webbing right here, probably because that's the shape of the neck webs kind of coming up and then the, the shape of the front webs coming down and they just meet right here. Um, Cause you know, I always, I mentioned a lot, you want your cells to kind of be equal size to the cells around it. And then you have weird stuff like that. That means that they, you know, that was their solution to having this, the cells equal sized on the neck and then the cells equal sized on the face. And then you don't see under the jaw very well anyway. So you can, you can kind of get away with stuff down there. Um, and so, yeah, going back to that, what that means is I want to bring, it's not even that one. That's all the way down to this one. That's pretty crazy. Zoom in a little bit. Move it back a little bit. Try to meet meet halfway between this line and this line. Um, and I'm going to move, well, I need to look back at reference really quick because I want to potentially change the sizes here. Yeah, it's hard because this nose segment is gigantic. It's really, really large. It's like a, inch and a quarter. Um, I don't know what that would be in other units, but um, yeah, it's really hard to, I mean, it's just very large. And then the chin is pretty large and then it's smaller in between. So the, for me, the, the tendency is to want to make it so that they're all kind of equal sized, but it actually, you know, needs to be moved down a little bit probably. And then this one needs to be moved up. Uh, take out the old mask really quick. And uh, you just keep turning it on and off because that helps to kind of, there's sometimes there's just too much information when you do that and it, and it can be overstimulating. I'll turn the, the back mask off too, because you can, you can see here, oops, I didn't, didn't finish cutting off the back mask here. Kind of looks like a fish fishtail with the little skeleton sticking out. All right. And now I'm just gonna cut those out. So, I mean, this is starting to look a lot more like a finished mask pattern. For, for you scammers and thieves out there that wanna steal mask patterns, I'm, I'm not actually condoning that, but I mean, I don't care. I mean, <laughs> you, you, it's just too too much fun doing this stream to worry about the fact that I'm basically just giving you all this information for free. Because, you know, the reality is when I really get kicked into gear with this stream, I don't think that those types of scammers can even compete. I mean, they'll they'll be playing such catch-up. I, 
I'm doing this stream at three times a week. I've already done 15 streams in a month. The, the scammers and the thieves out there will be playing such catch up. They're going to get overwhelmed with it as long as I can keep to this stream. And so far, I'm loving it. It's just, it's fixing a lot of the issues I've, I've had with this work where it's so like um, open ended and difficult to, you know, really force yourself to a schedule. But like with the stream, that really changes a lot of stuff for me because um, suddenly, you know, I've got this, this responsibility um, to myself and to you guys to get this thing out there. If I don't get this out there, then that's that my my absence will be there for all time, and I don't want that to happen. So um, yeah, so I'm excited about the stream. That's just a little little side note while I'm sitting here and and working on basically what might be the final final mask pattern for my MCU. Um, okay, so I'm moving around this back piece. I actually kind of don't want to do that. Um, what I can do is. Uh, um, what I'm about to show you, anyway, sorry, let me organize my thoughts here. What I'm going to show you is a way to make sure that, like, your webbing segments will line up. Because you don't necessarily want to be guessing. You don't want to guess if your webbing segments are going to line up. You don't want to eyeball it. Because sometimes, if a shape is really curved like this, that adds surface area to the edge. You know, it adds... You know, it's not as short as a straight line between those two points. It's a little bit longer. And sometimes you're having a straight line that goes up to that. And so you'll eyeball it and they'll look about the same size. But actually because of that, you know, slight bulge in the shape of the line, you'll add that much extra to the line. And so it'll be more difficult to get your, your lines lined up. <laughs> lines lined up. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so uh, what you can do, what I was kind of getting at there, um, this is my favorite method actually, because we're still on just the mask sketch file. If we look at the paths here, it's just the sketch. What I like to do is take something that I like. I like the way, well, let me edit it a little bit. Um, I like the way that's all spaced out. And what I do is I make a new line and I don't, I don't have it intersect this. But it's basically like its own type of webbing line. And I make a little bump between um, the each of the points. And if there's a lot of curve, like this one actually has quite a bit of curve to it, I'll put halfway bumps like this and then continue on. That's a pretty straight line, so I'm not too worried about that. And then what this allows you to do is I take this line and control T since only it is selected uh, or I just actually go to uh, transform and flip horizontally. And now what I can do is I can line this, this path up with the other side and it's kind of like a ruler. It's a measurement tool and I just move my origin point so it's going to rotate around that. And now I can see right, right away when I rotate that, that that corner, I, I, I did a bad job sizing that out. The, that corner is m way too large. It needs to be much shorter because that's even a curved shape um, going against a flat shape. And so now I can also check, and I'm gonna, like I said, there was a curved shape there and I made a little bump here. So you can just keep moving and stepping along. And that one's pretty good. That one's actually pretty right on, right on the money. Um, and so now I can just go in and move that up a little bit and shrink that. So those will, will line up a little bit better in the final mask. And that allows me to kind of clean up the whole design here as I move down the neck. I have a little reference image here. It helps with um, uh, not having to go back and forth. It's nice to just have that information right there in front of you. And so I'm work I'm looking at this line right here right now, and it's a pretty straight line that comes down this guy right here. And so I basically want to turn down this curve a little bit. And I think 
also bring this curve in a little bit and even bring this guy in a little more and ease up its curve even ease up the curve on this side a little bit um, yeah that's already looking I think I might just move these over just as a final you know pulling everything together and now I'm just playing this game that I've played for hundreds of hours probably through the course of my my time making these suits of just you know figuring out where uh, what looks good um, going from point to point and making sure everything lines up and and that's the key you know using the path tool really is the key here because you can just edit everything forever infinitely um, so it's really really a cool thing to have that available Uh, I'm going to do that same thing I did, oh wait, there's still some more lining up that needs to be done. So this web wants to come from like right under the lens, pretty close in, and since I shrunk the design, I think it does need to go over a little bit, and then it just kind of goes straight down though, after it curves a little bit. This one comes up a little bit, maybe. Yeah, uh, super, super interesting work, I'm sure. But I mean, if you're if you're into this kind of this thing, um, then it probably is pretty interesting because this is how you do it. I do it at least. Um, everyone has their own ways. If it works, and it's if it's stupid and it works, then it isn't stupid. I guess is the is the phrase to go go with here. <laughs> it's better that it be stupid and work than smart and not work. I guess also. Um, so yeah, this thing is um, already. I, I'm I'm thinking this is probably going to be an issue up here still. It's very much a corner. It's just going to kind of be some points right here unless it's really pulled tight that's kind of the only circumstance in which it wouldn't be just a big corner uh, that's why yeah that's why I'm rounding it out here I'm kind of making that chin shape for it because it if it's a point if it's coming to a point that just means that there's not enough of a curved chin shape for the seam to do um, although the, the chin is below that that's not actually the chin Yeah, chins, the chin's at the bot, the base of the third web there. So, yeah, and it does go pretty straight down there. It's just the kind of the shape of the chin that's making it look curved. I think all of this needs to go over just a little bit. Add some strength there and then turn it down from up there. Um, move that over. And these are only half bumps here. They're, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be continue, you know, they'll be mirrored in the middle. So there's only half of a webbing segment there. Although some Spider-Man suits have a middle line for their webbing segments. Okay. So now I'm just moving around the mask and finding shapes that might not be as accurate as I want them to be. And that's basically everything. Everything needs to be changed a little bit because I just did some pretty sizable alterations to the shape all over. Um, like this, this bump needs to be brought down, I think. Yeah, because it curves, it comes and uh, goes a little straighter as it curves out. And then I'd even say this maybe needs to come forward a little bit. Yeah. And it's slightly more pronounced as well. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Uh, 
uh, I might have gone too low here. Or maybe maybe my frame needs to be bigger. That could also be my problem. My, my whole lens frame need, might need to be a little bit bigger. Because then, if it was, it allows me to move this webbing segment down a little bit. Although I'm just going to do that either way. Yeah, that looks symmetrical. Either way, you just want it to look symmetrical. Even if it's not perfectly accurate to the movie suit. As long as it's symmetrical and clean, it doesn't draw attention. Just adds to the whole. That's kind of the thing about Spider-Man suits. It's all of the little components that add to the whole. And sometimes you you know you miss some of the components, but that's the cool thing about these suits is that I mean if you get a cool print and a cool you spend the time puff painting, it just looks awesome no matter what. Um, okay, so since I moved that a little bit, oops, that's a very odd grouping. Hey, fun for Spidey. What's up, dude? Thanks for tuning in. It's always fun to have you guys tune in while I sit here and work on stuff. Okay, <clears throat> um, so I've basically got the design I want. So I'm going to continue to do what I've done. I, I started here a little bit, and this process is just like a, just making sure the best to, your, to the best of your ability that the webbing segments are equal distance um, are the right size so that everything goes together and I mean this is I've sewn together I actually have only sewn together one print that I didn't design and there's kind of a reason for that because the person who designed it just didn't know how to put together a print at all and so it was so hard to sew it together because like there were certain things that like misaligned and like, oh, it was so hard to put it together. I think it was Paul, that uh, that lo loser from a few years ago, that he was like one of the first scammers who, he introduced me to the first dye sublimator that I used. And I gave, I didn't really know about di much about dye sublimation at that point. And so I gave him like the full Photoshop file because I didn't know, oh, maybe he, he'll need it for separating colors or blah, 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 blah. And, um, uh, that asshole gave it to this scammer, Paul, because I think, or sorry, language, I should keep this G, um, that jerk, uh, gave it to this, this guy I know, um, that I met out here named Paul, that is just a, a total scammer, you know, thief that, I mean, there are a lot, a lot of people out here in, in the Spider-Man, like making Spider-Man stuff that are just so manipulative and backstabbing they'll they'll like smile to your face and pretend to be your friend and steal it in order to steal your stuff like it's it's crazy like actual insane sort of like fictional like movie levels of manipulation like villains like it's crazy that i'm working on spider-man costumes and occasionally i run into these villains i mean there's no sort of no other way to look at it and um a lot of them are out there have turned out that way like i mean even like God, I could just go through the list, but I, you know what? I won't give them the time of day. Uh, you know, a lot of this this stream is kind of like, um, you know, I'll be honest. They, a lot of those guys out there that are like that, what I was just describing, the the sort of manipulative scammer types. Um, they've been making a lot, a lot of money off of Spider-Man stuff, and uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't been super motivated to do anything like that because it's, it's illegal. It's, you know, you. Spider-Man writes, um, Disney owns it, and Disney's a pretty scary company, um, and so a lot of, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, the whole, the whole world of, like, selling cosplay pieces is kind of confusing to me, that everyone is kind of, like, so comfortable making a company around a property that they don't own or own the rights to, like, basically a single cease and desist letter could shut down their whole business, um, it just confuses me a little bit how they, they can do that. Well, and a lot of times, those people, those scammers, they're they're from another country, like somewhere in um, Southeast Asia. I've had problems with Southeast Asia. I've had a lot of problems with the UK. Um, and I mean, that's, I, I think maybe I've had some Canada problems. Um, I've, I've seen some Canada stuff, I think. Um, but, uh, you know, I, 
a lot of a lot of these guys because unfortunately spider-man is a very lucrative industry in in and of himself and so it, it attracts that type um but yeah uh i've met a, i've met a lot of guys that that do that unfortunately but um you know the great thing about this stream is that they kind of they make a lot of their money off the fact that you guys watching this don't know how to do this stuff like you don't know how to design your own print you don't know how to get a dye sublimated you don't know how to make a face shell you don't know how to vacuum form things so these scammers are making money off of your lack of knowledge so a little bit of my my motivation with these streams is to get that that knowledge out there to you guys because it uh um you know <laughs> it's a little it just it kind of it kind of bums me out to see those scammers still out there and still making money off of this stuff you know because unfortunately even when even when a scammer gets called out for scamming for for what they're doing if they're making you know if they if they are stealing my facials and recasting them then sometimes people don't care they don't you know the people that you you'd think would care that you know my my work is being stolen they care more about getting it they care about getting the work and so for them they just don't really care about um uh yeah they just don't you know it, sometimes people like it, it kind of baffles me a little bit sometimes because even though i'll announce that a person is a scammer everyone just kind of ignores it and they go on talking about that person's stuff and and enjoying it when it's like really if a person ever steals another person's work i think that that makes that person totally untrustworthy anything they make in the future anything good halfway good they make in the future i think you've got a you you have to have a huge asterisk about the fact that they are the type of person that stole someone else's design recast another person's design because what that means is that this this cool thing that they have in front of you right now it's probably stolen it's probably recasted um so those people um you know what i'll say it joe lie i don't know why people are still accepting of him because i know for sure that he gave my suit away my suit pattern away to a, a competitor of mine and he also recast my face shell and my lenses which is a big no-no and distributed it i mean if you're if you're recasting for yourself for your own purposes that's sort of a gray area but if you're if you're recasting with the intent to distribute that's a no-no you're just stealing you're you're basically i mean you know it's it's piracy to us someone who's just a tiny little company and it, it makes a difference to um anyway enough of that tangent that's my my tangent on those guys because i really don't care because you know i'm i'm ready to get this stuff out there and i've got i've got some amazing projects coming up here that uh that are 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 not not spider-man related but can be um you know that's a little open-ended but um i'm so excited i've got some things things um in the chamber that are gonna be really really cool um okay so back to pattern town i'm basically doing this whole time what i i showed you earlier where i'm going along and seeing how everything syncs up how how these line up and you can tell that there's a lot more surface area in there. Um, you know, this is this point right here lines up with this webbing, and you can tell that there's a lot of surface area, excess surface area in there. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the transformation like that. So I've got that just left there. So I know I've got this reference and I've got that as reference. So just go ahead and move that down. And that means I should probably move this down as well. Only a little bit though, because going back to the reference here, it's only, you know, um, a little bit of space between the the tip of the lens and that 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 web line right there. It's kind of hard to see because in this photo, that's right where the light is reflecting from. Um, okay, so now. I have to move this webbing segment all the way down there. And that means I've got to bring these down as well because you can't just only move the side segment down. It creates too steep of a slope right here. Ugh. 
my wireless mouse really doesn't like being 20 feet away from the computer. <laughs> Sometimes it quits on me. Oops. So I'm going to move this over so that it meets that line a little bit. And this is also a good opportunity for me to kind of check and see how this forehead line looks. I didn't really look at that. Because it dips down quite a bit. Might dip down even more. Mm. No, I like the way it is right now. I'll leave it the way it is. Um, but I need to continue. Actually, I need to move this guy in a little bit, probably. Um, <clears throat> ZZ just, um, oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, fun for Spidey. I appreciate the, the agreeing on, on probably on the scammer talks. Um, ZZ, are you ever going to screen print this suit? Um, possibly. Uh, I talked to, uh, spoke to El Fett about it on his stream and I don't know, he might, I don't know what his plans are with, with his projects, but, uh, he always seems very down to to collaborate on stuff so we might we might start screen printing this because that does that does seem like the easy the simplest solution to get to the sort of finish you need for this thing um, okay and so now I can go back wait hold on uh, yeah that's pretty good um, now I can go back to this and uh, transform it again. Move the anchor point here. Um, yeah, and since that was a big curve, I'm going to step it along. Okay, so I can tell I've got, since I've shrank everything, I've got an extra centimeter almost of material at the top. So, you know, that's the kind of information that that whole process is really good for gathering. So I'm just going to shrink the whole top down and oh wait hold on yeah and then also transform it and bring it in yeah that makes a lot of sense it just starts to make sense like the shape of it how it how it basically will fit around the head. Um, uh, I need a I need a reference picture of the top slash back of the mask like that. Yeah, that's that's rough. Uh, that one's okay. I want to see one of these these newer pictures like these these production photos that has more more of that info. Um, Oh, that one has a little info up here. You know, basically just figuring out how much of a gap, what the spacing is between there, and it looks pretty equal. Because right now mine's, yeah, mine's pretty equal. Maybe it needs to move over a little. Oops. Hmm. That was a little too far. And it's just judgment. It's just, you know, little little tiny judgments. A million little judgments in order to make this thing. Just like, is that good? Is that too big? Is that too small? Um, now that I've finished with that, I can move it off to the side. And I'll just keep these. I'll actually keep these um, uh, off to the side on the sketch path layer. Because you'll inevitably use it again um, when you're, you're editing some seam or something. Because... It would be awesome if this mask pattern was just fine like this. If it was, you know, I've, I've gotten pretty lucky before. And after this first initial stage of uh, edits and stuff, it actually comes out pretty well. And I, I can definitely tell that I'm getting better and better at it. But um, uh, no, it can be very, <laughs> like, you can, sometimes you can go through this process of doing a sketch pattern. And then, um, yeah, I think my keyboard is dying now too. Um, doing a sketch pattern and then going over and doing a real pattern or doing a test 
test of it and then coming back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jonathan East just said um, the energy just changed when you're talking about scammers like yeah yeah I get a little passionate about that because um, I mean it's it's pretty insane uh, you know I've I've had to deal with some some crazy stuff like people that will make up a bunch of fake profiles and spam me with messages and it's always pretty obvious um, you know, they have to work harder at it because I can I can see through a fake profile pretty easily, unless you you go through the length of go to the length of like stealing it or you know rec recreating a whole fake person. But you know, then you're you're going through a lot of work. But anyway, the scammers actually do that. They make like fake people and you know that kind of stuff. It just is like for what a little bit of money for for your your thing you do that to another person another human being somewhere else on the world and also someone that you probably like appreciate their work if you're you know doing that like i, I wonder if they're not just totally psychotic it's you know it's a it's a scary thing it's like um they're, they're not they're not fun people to deal with so any, and then it always sucks because it, it feels like, you know, whenever I am, like, making a stream or having to worry about, like, watermarks on my photos, it just feels like, you know, it's a little victory for them because it's something I have to worry about. Um, so I love, I love this change of pace because it's like, <laughs> I don't, I don't have to worry about it anymore. I can do, I'll just be open with everything I make and that will be the best, the best fight because, I, I mean... I'm, I'm, I, I really, I think I have a, a pretty good ability to, to tackle new projects and with this stream, just like constantly working on new stuff, I just, I mean, the, the scammers that, that have, have gotten by on that aren't, aren't going to be able to do it for much longer, I'd say. <laughs> I've even seen some trolls here on the YouTube stream, you know, say, say some, some pretty crazy things. And uh, a few days ago, there's kind of a, a rabble, a rabble rousing about uh, it was like a week ago about the fact that the stream was late and people were posting kind of uh, mean com or you know just angry comments about like oh I'm unsubbing because there's no stream today and then there were some comments under kind of like yeah and like I think I wouldn't be surprised if maybe someone um, had done that because that's a kind of a peculiar thing to uh, for someone to like go through like sure be angry about it and unsubscribe but to be like uh... oh I think I might have done that wrong oh no that was right um yeah time flies when you're <laughs> talking about something you're passionate about i guess um but yeah so i, I love the whole direction of this stream and everything so there we go i basically have just made the pattern here for you guys the the stage two this is basically version um, I wouldn't call this, I, I don't go into versions until like, this is all still version one. This is all going to be suit version one. And then someday down the road, because inevitably, when you tackle a suit, there's, there's little errors and things. Um, and if you continue working on it, then you want to tackle those things and, and fix them. And that's when you get version two of the suit. So, you know, you know, I, I don't call these like different the versions yet. These are just kind of like prototype stage masks and pattern things because over the coming weeks there's gonna be a lot of this because I'm going to be doing this on my mannequin for the whole suit I'm gonna be doing the everything um, really just do a whole custom suit I'm not even gonna use my old amazing pattern as reference or the Raimi pattern as reference I'm just gonna start from scratch uh, I might use the one of those patterns for reference for the gloves because gloves are you, you can do your own glove pattern, and I did for Amazing Spider-Man 2, but um, sometimes it's just easier to use what's already out there. Uh, it's a pretty standard glove pattern that's on the Raimi pattern. Um, okay, so what I can start kind of doing here... Uh, this is a little weird. This is a little high. And so that probably means that this needs to also be moved down. That looks a lot better. Okay, 
So what I could do here is start getting ready to do my um, test mask. And I've got the mask front here. So I want to do a new layer that has uh, mask front outline. Oh, and uh, now this is also when I could go ahead and pick everything apart and um, uh, I'll copy what I've worked on here. And there's some crazy stuff going on in this. I don't know why this happened, but for some reason I combined paths early on in this project. That's why there are a lot of like, I, I've only selected the outline here, but for some reason there are a lot of extra things selected. So I have to actually go through and just delete each of those points. Um, so that was a mistake, but uh, it's pretty easy to fix it. All right, and I'm going to pull these two lines down as well. Oops, guess I didn't copy that. Copy. There we go. So that's the outline there of the just the mask piece, and I mean it's crazy how high up that that neck line is and it, it might have to be moved down because that is pretty crazy high for a neck seam to be but uh who knows it might might work out just fine so i'm gonna go ahead and hit that with some brush here and then do the webs oh that's right so i'm gonna have to do the web columns, no rows, rows first probably. So go to the sketch, just go through. And again, I'm going to get rid of everything in this old layer. This all exists in that different file, so it won't be hard to get that back if I needed to. But I don't need to, so... Um, yeah, it's very annoying that I did that early on. I got those things mixed together. All right, jeez, what's going on? I've, I've really bogged my computer down here. Okay, what's going on? Come back, jeez. There we go, gosh. This is all stuff I shouldn't have to really be doing right now. It's annoying. But that's why I'm pulling it apart here. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of organizing here. I'm going to just, um, you know, I'll just cut that. It gets rid of it. And just paste it into that, that web row layer I've got. I still need that line, which is annoying. Okay, that's not that bad. Okay, that was easy. Now, I go ahead and pull the columns out. This is going to be another annoying one. Don't know why I did this. Yep, they're all attached for some reason. Ugh, very annoying. OK, 
Okay, good. My iPad turned off. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. I'm doing columns here. Oh, uh, wait. Oh, that's why. Yeah, I think that's all of them. Yeah, I think so. I need to hide this outline. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Only five. That's pretty crazy, having worked on so many of these things. Um, so now what I can do is do the web. Oh, wait, that's right. I already did that. Web rows here. Make sure you have the brush selected. Then you hit this button down here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do web column. And so before, I made the gaps pretty thick. I made them too thick. I think I used 40. I'll try it with 30 this time. 30 pixels. Oh, that's way too thick. Um, 15? 15 might be good. So hit web columns. And now, oh, that's right. Uh, oh, well. Do another one. And this is how I add in the gap between the webs. I just hit stroke it again. But this time, let's do it seven. Because I want four four inches, four pixels on either side. And use white. So there you go. See how I did that? Just uh, like a little web gap. It looks white, but once, once I remove the transparency and just turn this into a, a JPEG image, it's gonna um, uh, do that anyway. Everything will turn white. I accidentally left some pads in there. I can just delete all that really quick, easily. Oops. If you delete, if you press delete and what you wanted to delete doesn't go away, that means you just deleted a path. And I did. There we go. So there's the front of the mask. Go back to my mask sketch here. I'm going to be pulling things apart again. Take out that back outline. Get rid of the old one. And that back web row, or column, I should say. And then the row. <laughs> the back, all right. Well, I need both of these. No, that's right, I only need the middle one. Okay, so now I can go through and do the same process. Just back outline. Oops, didn't select the brush first. Oh, I, I still have a white as selected as my color. If you hit X, it allows you to, if you see it, look over here. When I hit X, I switch between these colors. So if you find yourself using two colors a lot, you should always do that. Have both colors selected. And so I go through this process again, 15. And since I like the way that looks, I'm gonna go ahead and save that as um, web column 
thickness. And this, if you're doing a full print with like uh, ASM1 had probably 25 different brush types on it that I used. And this is key, to be able to save brush types and have them available in your little menu here, um, you know, it really speeds things up. So I can, I can just click that really quickly and um, make sure I've got a new layer going. I don't really need it, but I mean, it's nice to just have everything separated. pixels for um, web call oops gap and hit X or well once you're out of there hit X switch between colors again and I once again I like to just do everything on different layers all right Oh, I didn't do the middle. Um, so if you're mirroring right down the middle, you know, I didn't, I treated this middle line as part of the outline, but there actually is a column here. And so I've got to keep that in mind when I'm doing any design work on this. So I can just take the, the front outline here. And if I get to the point selection here and I just click on the line between those two points and hit copy and go to yeah the web columns and then paste it only pastes that line and so what I can do is just take that bottom point there oops, select it hold shift oops shift gave up for some reason and just go straight up so there we go. That's the uh, that's my my forehead column essentially. Make sure it all goes all the way up. Yeah, because this is being a little weird right now. Oh, I might have moved the whole thing up. Yep, that's exactly what I did. Oops, moved the whole thing up. Okay, so. Go back to those layers that I went through, web column. Oh, first of all, use the one that I have selected. And uh, if you go to here and have like um, your, what is it called? Path selection tool. This is the, the, um, the black one selects like a full completed path. And so if you just have one path selected, it'll only well, you have to have the brush. You have to select the path and then have brush selected, but that will allow it to just only do that effect to that one line. So hit X, which will switch the color. Go back to the 15 preset. Go to the web column again and do that. So now we have the middle column uh, on the middle of the forehead. So when it's flipped over for the sake of uh, this process, oh gosh, I forgot. Yeah, that means that you know, I'm not going to care too much about the column, the column on this this seam because um, that's another say thing. Um, oh no, is the stream frozen? I hope it's not. Well, it looks like it's healthy. Well, I hope it's all going well. Anyway, um, but yeah, um, good point, Jonathan East. Save often. Yeah, <laughs> I'm typically much better about saving frequently. And this is a this is a pretty good stage. A good rule of thumb: if you forget to save a lot, just when you're, um, whenever you get to a good, like plateau, like whenever you're like at a point where you're like, wow, yeah, I like that product. Just remember to save. That's a point where you need to save. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna save because I, I can keep all of this work in this second uh, mass pattern file. So. Now what I need to do need to do is get these things ready for printing. Um, uh, what I was saying a second ago about the column that goes down along this seam, I'm not putting that in because you would kind of have an issue of, well, do you put it in below or do you put it in above? Um, and 
that's a that's a call I'm going to make probably for the just the purely dye sublimated pattern, but I've got some ideas for what I'm going to do with the seams on this suit. And I think it's going to be cool. I think it's going to totally hide the seams inside of the webbing detail. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll probably have a, a prototype of that mask done pretty soon because uh, I have I have the material from Fernando. He has the Deadpool material and it's really awesome. So, um, okay, moving forward. Now I've got this mask here and it's time to uh, get it ready for printing essentially. What I like to do, because I need to flip all of this over. Actually, no, I don't. I don't because I'm just printing the outline. I'm just printing half of the outline and then allowing it to um, um, uh, uh, I'm just gonna be since since they're tracing, you know, you, just, you're, you print off half the outline and you can flip it over, so you don't need the full outline. Basically, is where I was going before before I had a brain fart. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put also the lens outline on here because this is just a good you know it's good to to have um like a representation of where you think the lens is on your pattern versus because then when you get it onto the the mannequin head or onto a face shell like this and you have your lens on there you can see like oh shoot i i it's pulling here a lot more so the lens is you know the shape is distorted on my file so that kind of helps for lining everything up um okay got a smaller brush okay stroke that so I think I did this, maybe I did this, I at least talked about it in an older stream, but what I'm going to do to get these um, uh, these ready to print, because you can print from Photoshop, but I just, I've never had a lot of luck with it. Um, like, I mean, you can get the scale to 100%, um, but I mean, it's just like, it's hard to move stuff around. And so I always just, I, and I've done this for years. I always just print patterns and scale things in Microsoft Paint because it's really good at taking a giant image and printing it on multiple pieces of paper. It'd be great to have a giant wide format printer, but um, basically it prints everything on uh, multiple pieces of paper and you can just tape everything together and get your your outlines your larger outlines for like things like legs and back pieces so that way you're not like dye sublimation isn't your only option for making your patterns so you're not having to make a whole dye sublimated suit based off of a thing that's never been sewn before I, I couldn't imagine that um, so uh, yeah so picking up where I left off here I've got just just the space around the mask selected right now. So what I'm gonna do is crop. And that gives me just an image size. And I saved a little while ago, that's key. You wanna save before you start doing this stage. Cause then I'm gonna go in and save as, don't hit save or else you've just kind of annihilated all the work we've done. Hit save as, change the format here to something easier for Microsoft um, to uh, uh, read but um, <laughs> I closed that because it's a stupid file that popped up that is showing you guys too much. <laughs> hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, yeah, let me move that up here. Sorry, I'm not letting you look at that, that file. I don't know why it keeps trying to, to save in there. Oh, that's, that's why, it makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, and so uh, I'm going to go ahead and save it. I can show you, show you a little bit. It's not like you can't just go back and see what I'm hiding from you <laughs> later in the stream. And it's not like we're not going to be discussing it in the next like two weeks. I mean, that's why I'm doing this work right now. I need to get these streams with the moving lenses out there. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting to get this stuff out there and continue to practice the stream. So, um, so you want to save the JPEG as something that's easy to find, like front. And uh, yeah, high quality. And then you just go ahead and do Control Z, Control Alt Z to continue to go back and it's like nothing happened. Um, and you do the exact same thing over here. I actually, you know what I'll do? 
Uh, no, what? I'll, I'll, I'll keep them separate. I was just going to move this over so that it was inside of this, this empty area in here. Because then it would, uh, maybe for printing, for dye sublimation printing, because this mask is awesome so far. It's really tiny and um, concise. So, uh, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll just do what I, I was doing before. So, uh, crop. I'll save as. Really, I should just move to a different folder so you can see me do this. So uh, right now it's only showing up as Photoshop files, but you switch into JPEG, and that allows you to uh, edit stuff, or uh, save it as a JPEG, I mean. And then Control Z a couple times. And now what I do, Make sure everything is <sighs> stupid Internet Explorer. Um, that's for that GIF. That GIF is pretty cool. Um, now, go ahead and open this. Not that, that. Yeah, if you just click it, it opens in the photo viewer. So you go to open with after you right click. And Photoshop's an option, but you want to do paint. I do paint. I mean, you can do whatever whatever gets this done for you. Oh, whoops. You don't want to print right away. First, you have to go to uh, Page Setup, and you want 100% scale size. And this this will give you just a very quick little representation of what how big the image is, that gray box, and where on the paper it is. So that's that's perfect. You know, it all fits on one one side, obviously. So I can just go right ahead and print that. Um, now, what I'll do, open that other one. If I can navigate to the MCU stuff. There we go. So here's that pattern we made. Look how clean and nice everything is. That's like a, uh, a coloring book. Like if you really were good at Photoshop and path, the path tool, like everything I've done, you could have a coloring book. You know, you could have you could have made whatever image. You could have made a, a Spider-Man image, and you know, there's a lot of a lot of utility to this knowledge. I guess is what I'm getting at. So, um, yeah. So same same story, although yeah, that's fine. Um, page setup. And once again, you want it 100%. And it's nice, because, oh man, with the shrinking, now it fits in the width of one piece of paper. Oh, that's really nice, because a lot of times it can just stretch right outside of it. And that just makes it so annoying in the trimming and taping process, because then you have a little little tiny tab you have to deal with. Um, oh, and this is another opportunity where you can remove your margins. Just hit zero, and it'll automatically go to the lowest margin it can give you. and. Uh, that's a that's a good way for larger pattern pieces to get everything, um, you know, spaced out. So go ahead and print. Go ahead and print. I'll go see if those actually printed. Okay, so sorry for that absence. I just walked up, up walked upstairs and um, printed the outline. My printer is acting really stupid right now. These should be, like you see on the screen, just really stark black and white outlines. But right now it's just being really dumb and I, maybe I have to change the ink or something and it's just giving me these very wispy, not very well filled in outlines. Um, and it's, it's enough, it's enough information to do it, but it's really annoying. Um, so yeah, that's 
the work up to the point of uh, test mask number two. Because at this point, I have to find my scotch tape. And once I do, at this point, there we go. Okay, so at this point, it's just scotch tape. And uh, making sure everything lines up. You can, if you really, uh, if you want a really good um, finished outline, you can trim the margin off on one side and line everything up. I just don't even really care about the margin that much. I can, I can get, get most of what the information is behind that margin. I can guess at it. It's just a white bar that's about an eighth of an inch thick, essentially. I don't really have my desk cam set up right now, so I apologize for the lack of detail as far as this, this step goes. Today's been mostly a computer stream day, I guess. Mostly computer stuff. All right, I mean, once you've done that, you can kind of uh, go in with scissors Clean it up. And so now, my next step is going to be grabbing some red spandex and my light table. And actually making this test mask. All right. Oh yeah, I, I haven't mentioned yet. For those of you who are tuning in, thank you, first of all, for tuning in. Um, if you didn't notice on Instagram and Facebook, I posted a link to a new Facebook page just for this, the live stream. And that, pa that page is gonna be where I'm gonna post a lot of the information, like, uh, you know, updates, like if I'm running late on the stream, I'll post it there, rather than posting it on my Instagram or my Facebook page where I might be, you know, kind of annoying, annoying some of my friends and, you know, family and stuff that are on my Facebook. So, you know, having, having a, a ton of posts every other day is a little, little bit like of a, uh, too much information. So if you, if you like these streams, you can go and subscribe to that Facebook page and I'll put more stuff. Like I'm going to, uh, hash out a more tentative schedule for this MCU work. Like what, what I'll, um, uh, you know, plan to do for the different streams in order to actually get this thing done and, and get to some cool stuff pretty quick. So uh, on that Facebook page, I'll post like a uh, uh, thing, a blurb, or a, not a blurb, a list, a list of things that uh, will be just the tentative schedule. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, now the next step would be getting out red spandex, um, tracing it. I think, I think I did a little bit of tracing in one of the last streams. Um, I'm not really set up to do any desk work right now. I didn't, I didn't really think, think past the Photoshop stage of everything, but it was a two hour stream cleaning up the mask file and everything. And I'll probably just go ahead and throw this mask together. Uh, uh, you know, I might, I might save that for the next stream. Just keep everything, you know, going along on the stream. That's what the next one would be because then we could sew this mask together really quick. Uh, try it on, on the mannequin head on, on, and on my head. And you know, that's a good uh, size scale, <laughs> large head to small head and see how it fits. And then with that, you have more information and you can do basically the same process again of just going in and tweaking until you have a good solid mask. And then I'll be able to make a really nice test mask for um, the moving lenses. You know, I wanna, if I'm doing the moving lenses, I did, I did the moving lenses in this mask last time, and I, I really did luck out. This one is pretty similar. Um, you know, it's got the forehead, the three forehead webs, one in the middle and two on either side, and then only a couple side face webs. I mean, it's crazy how accurate this actually kind of already is to the MCU pattern. But this was actually just a pattern I made in, uh, for Ultimate, uh, the Ultimate Spider-Man pattern and I just I looked at a lot of um, I looked at a lot of 
reference from the comics, and the comics were very concise with the ultimate design on what what everything looked at looked like for him. Um, and so that's what this is. But when I did these moving lenses about a year ago, you know, I used this mask, and it's just annoying the the people that are like, oh, it's the wrong mask, or oh, you got this detail in the mask wrong, and it's like, I know, uh, you know, so it's. It's one of those things where I want to have this mask done before I even start on the moving lenses. Uh, and it's also kind of cr uh, crucial because this is more complicated than your standard magnetic lens setup where, you know, you're able to just go and stick a lens on and then take the mask off when you want to. Uh, for this, you kind of need to connect your mask to your shell and kind of um, do some, some intricate things. You know, that's how I got the, the eye socket here. Uh, you could conceivably do some stuff that wouldn't make you have to do that, but um, I, I had to, I had to do that. And so you basically have to have your mask actually fully connected to the lenses and the shell right there, so it actually couldn't, you know, just come off easily. Um, so yeah, so uh, that's uh, that's kind of the the first stream of April to kind of ramp up this MCU work. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm gonna start sharing a lot more. I'm going to start doing some more um, promo stuff while also at the same time, just because I know there are some of you who are out there waiting for face shells. I'm still also going to be balancing my time with getting face shells done in the day. Um, I, you know, I, I could be doing facial work on the streams here, but I really just want to be careful not to make it too um, monotonous, like the same thing stream after stream kind of just running together. Uh, I'm excited to tackle new stuff every stream and always have some new stuff to, to be tackling. So um, uh, I think that does it. Uh, there's not really anything else I want to talk about. Um, yeah, if you if you came in late, you can go ahead and watch this stream again from the beginning uh, in like an hour or two. Sometimes it takes a while for them to get the, the stream updated and archived. So uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. It was a cool stream. I'm glad I could... Uh, uh, come out despite despite my head cold and and design some stuff in Photoshop. So yeah, thanks for thanks for tuning in, guys.